there's this narrative that is going through the corporate media and corporate senators and all of that 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 basically says that the reason that Democrats lost in Virginia is because of the left. Oh, yeah, uh huh? Who couldn't have seen this coming? Who couldn't have seen this coming? So, what you gotta know is that these excuses were coming even before the result came out. Mark Warner, who's worth like $85 million, $86 million, something like that, he came out and said, well, you know, it's a day before the race. This is Monday. If we had only passed a bipartisan infrastructure bill, we could have given Biden a win. And guess what? Terrible call for the one. So in a way, he's saying, well, come on. The left won't detach the reconciliation bill from the bipartisan infrastructure bill. It's their fault when we all know the reason they won't detach it is because If they do, well, that means that they'll vote the bipartisan infrastructure bill through and then Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema and Angus King and all these other dumbasses can come out and say, I'm I'm not going to support this reconciliation bill. I'm sorry. (laughs) And so the left, even though they're weak, feckless ass wipes, is saying, yeah, no, we want both. Okay, fine. We'll, We'll give you your bipartisan, corporatized, privatized infrastructure bill, you give us this $3.5 trillion package. Now, the left is blowing that, and I I will get to that. And then you have Politico saying, chatter in Washington is that Joe Biden went too far to the left. No, why did Joe Biden ever go to the left? He never did. Joe Biden went to the right. Because here's what Joe Biden did. Here's why the Democrats are fucking losing in the fucking first place. What happened was Joe Biden comes in, high approval rating, gives us a stimulus check, and boom! His rating's higher than it's ever been. And the Congress's rating is higher than it's ever been because it's almost, almost like they materially improved people's lives. Maybe. That's the reason. So we have this horrible issue where they're blaming the left. First off, you're blaming the left when Joe Biden has this terrible bill. And I'm getting back to this point where this $3.5 trillion package was whittled down to $1.75 trillion. And they took out paid medical leave, paid family leave. Expansion of healthcare, free community college, negotiations with drug companies and Medicare, lower prescription drugs. They took all of that out. And now they're giving tax cuts to millionaires and billionaires. And they pass military budgets that are overbloated. And they think that's how you win a fucking election. You assholes. So that's not how you win an election. That's actually how you lose an election because all those issues had between a 65 and a 90% approval rating. So you took the most popular provisions and said, let's take them out. This is the corporate conservative democratic party for you. They're not here to help you. They're here taking out all the provisions and then all these assholes on the left saying, oh, well, Well, something is better than nothing, right? (laughs) Well, apparently not. Because Virginia just told you, no, something isn't better than nothing. I'd rather take nothing. And here, you want me to show you? F*** you, Democrats. F*** you is what they're saying and doing. And they're going to the ballot box and they're saying, I don't want Democrats in charge because they don't can do shit. Neither do the Republicans. But at least they're honest. At least they're honest. So they take out all those provisions and it makes no sense because they're so popular. They're all very popular. So uh, it, it really pains me to look at this and say, well, yeah, they're, they're allowing this to happen. My God. Holy sh**. The other problem here is how corporate conservative this guy, Terry McAuliffe, was. 
Terry McAuliffe was chairman of Bill Clinton's campaign in 1996, the re-election campaign for Bill Clinton. He was chairman of Hillary Clinton's 2008 failed campaign. And he's so conservative that he supported right-to-work laws, which basically means, sure, I'll give you health care. Sure, I'll let you have paid wages, all that, whatever. But it's gross because it's a right-wing way of saying, I'm not going to give you this because you have to work for it, even though there is no need to work for it. So that's partly who he is. But then you have this race where the Republicans understand their policies are completely disastrously unpopular with the American people. They know that. They understand that. They understand it very well. The problem is they need a way to get away from that. So here's what Glenn Youngkin did. So the first thing he did was he went and he said, oh, okay, I'm not great on the economy. I'm a, I'm an investor. He has a, uh, an investment company that is in Virginia in the Fairfax County or in Fairfax County. He knows he can't go down the populist route because he, he ain't going to lift a finger to help the American people. But what he can do is what he did. He walked the fine line of, let me not upset the base. Let me just accept Trump's proposal, not go too far into the Trumpian crap, but also don't go too far left to upset the base. And then let me scoop up, let me go and grab all kinds of those, those suburbanites, the suburban wine moms who flipped for Biden based on economics. So he did that and I explained that in my other video and what he essentially does is talk about critical race theory. Oh my God, Terry McAuliffe is going to talk about, he's going to implement critical race theory. And if you let him in, he's going to talk about critical race theory. And instead of going the other direction, the Democrats fall down the rabbit hole of the culture war. So Terry McAuliffe goes, yeah, let's fight about CRT, critical race theory. Oh my God. Oh my God, how stupid can these guys be? You don't, don't go down the rabbit hole of the culture wars. Don't do it. Don't they go down that culture wars. It's stupid. That's their game. Don't go down the rabbit hole of the culture war. Let them do that. Let them do that. Because they're unpopular with the American people on fucking economics. So let them come out and say, Oh my God, critical race theory, transgenders in our bathrooms. <laughs> what he should have done is say, yeah, he's wrong on critical race theory and transgenders. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a $15 minimum wage. I'm going to give you free health care. I'm going to lower your taxes. I'm going to do free community college out here or free college tuition out here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to materially improve your lives, make it tan tangentially and economically better for you in life. And I'm going to put money in your pockets. I'm going to raise your wage. I'm going to do this. I'm going to support the pro act. I'm going to do this. If you change the conversation while these guys over here on the right are going on about, ah, oh, quick race here and white people. <laughs> We're in trouble. And you're talking, hey, man, I know times are tough for you. I know the pandemic's still on. I know you still don't have a job. Let me work with you. Let me create infrastructure jobs. If you're good at infrastructure, I'm going to create you a job. If, if you work at a grocery store, I'm going to raise your wages. If you work at a school, I'm going to raise teacher pay. If you want unions... I'm going to support the PRO Act and I'm going to make a state level PRO Act here in Virginia. And every retail shop here is going to have to unionize. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You turn the conversation to, listen, I know white people, da, 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 I get it, but I, I need help. The kitchen table issues are the most important thing. That's what you do. But they didn't do that. Terry McAuliffe goes and does the culture war sh Instead, so he goes down the Republican rabbit hole when that's their game and they will beat you where you beat them is, hey, let me help you with the economy. Hey, let me help you put money in your pocket. Let me send your kids to school. Let me help you get a savings. Let's do paid leave, paid family leave, paid medical leave, paid, this, paid, paid vacation time, working class issues that would lift Virginia from 50 to, I don't know, 20 to 10 something. But he never did that sh 
And it's disappointing to say the least, but it also shows you, man, these guys are horrible. And then they start going down the Trump is bad, Trump is bad, oh my God. (laughs) Trump's not in office, can stop talking about Trump. He's irrelevant, and so are you. And that completely backfired on him like it did in the 2016 election. You then have another layer to this of why it's not the left's fault and why it's the conservative Democrats' fault. And it's because Joe Biden is going more conservative, and that's the problem. He's a conservative to his core. The senators from Virginia are conservative to their core. The governor right now, Rav Northam, is a conservative. Terry McAuliffe, the guy who was running, was a conservative. So why vote for a, for a conservative when I can vote for the straight-up conservative? A Democratic conservative, I can vote for the straight-up conservative. So that's the problem. But it's also, you know, they didn't pass that $3.5 trillion package as it was. They didn't pass the minimum wage. They didn't pass the public option. They didn't pass the PRO Act. And so let's picture a different timeline like how Kalinsky had talked about on Secular Talk and said, let's say Biden passed that $3.5 trillion package. Let's say the minimum wage had been passed. And then he also gave you the public option. And then let's say he handed out more stimulus checks. How much you want to bet it would go from, hey, CRT here in the right wing. I, I'm a right winger. I want to talk CRT, critical race theory. And on the left, he would have said, now look, you understand how the minimum wage has gone up, right, folks? I'm Terry McAuliffe. You, you thought 15 was good. I'm going to go 20. I'm going to go 18. I'm going to go 60. I'm going to do something. You remember that infrastructure bill that was passed? I'm going to make sure more of that money comes here so I can create new jobs. Hey, uh, you know that expansion of Medicare? You thought they expanded it. I'm going to really expand it. <sighs> hey, I'm going to expand the public option. He won't. I'm going to raise your minimum wage. He won't. In fact, he'll take it down. I'm going to lower your taxes. He won't. He'll raise them. I'm going to support the PRO Act. He won't. He'll support corporations instead of you. I'm going to get us infrastructure money. He won't. My God, how different that would be. And then the Democrats would have a chance because the people would have said, well, uh, my life has materially improved to the point where I'm not struggling that much anymore. Or, or I, may be still, I, I may still be struggling, but it's not that horrible as it once was before this material crap came in. So I, I think that that could have been a wild, wild win for the Democrats, plus 10. And they would have won because it's a Democratic state, plus 10. Well, now it's Republican, plus 10. Wow. But they still think it's the left's fault. No, the only problem the left did was didn't push Joe Biden far enough and forcefully enough. I would have said, here's the deal. My caucus is not going to come back into Congress unless we have that $3.5 trillion untouched uh, package, untouched, non-means tested, nothing. Just as it is, and we pass that. If not, Biden doesn't get his agenda. Oh, and they, they, I'm going to go over a story where they cucked and only approved 10 drugs, 10 out of the hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands, I guess, that exist to lower their prices. 10 out of tens of thousands. Oh, my God, Democrats. Oh, progressives. Fuck you. Oh, God. So, there you go. The Democrats, they ain't going to learn. They don't care. The system works for both political parties. I'm stealing from Ron Placone here from the Jimmy Dore Show. They're okay with losing as long as Republicans support their business causes, and they will, and they fill their pockets. It's up to us to learn to not vote for these cucks. To not vote for these cucks. The Democratic Party is... Sh- and, uh, well, here we go. This is, this is who they are, and this is why they lost. It's not the fault of the left. And boy, oh boy, get ready, because when the midterms come and they lose bad... gonna be the left's fault again and then they're never gonna learn